Next year we will have a bigger space. As you can see, it is tight in here, which is why we were limited in the number of people that we could take this year. But we will have a bigger space next year to be able to accommodate. We didn't realize how awesome this would be. So we will definitely have that. Um, this is Mel Mix. I'm going to give a to Back. There are some chairs located over here if you'd like to sit during, um, but we will go ahead and pass this off to her. Let me know if you need anything, okay? Um, so, I'm Mal. I was an art teacher for, gosh, over five years, and um, I just started kind of making my own art, and I turned it more into a job where I could leave teaching. And um, so I've been painting on YouTube for how many years, Steven? Almost three. Almost three now. and. Um, it's just kind of been fun, just a way to keep working on art and kind of try to teach other people because that's what I went to school for. Um, so they asked me to come here and just do kind of a small workshop, and I haven't done this in person since I taught. So I thought it'd be um, just kind of nice to keep it small and kind of see how it went in the time. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to kind of do a small gradient with um, a silhouette. And if you want to draw your own characters today, that's totally fine. But I do have some tracers if you don't feel comfortable doing that. Because I know just some people are telling me they've never held a paintbrush before. So that's totally cool. We have everything here. This should be something that all of you guys can totally get done in our time period today. So we're going to go over color first because I do want something that you're happy with that you can customize. I don't want to make everyone paint the same thing. Because when I taught, I always kind of pushed originality with my students. So first, let's talk about some color. And I made a color wheel up here. And with the color wheel, you might remember from like elementary school. Can we get the door shut? I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a hard time hearing myself. Um, with our color wheel, we have three colors that are primary. Do we know what they are from elementary school? Yeah, you guys can just call them out. Red, red, yellow, yellow. red, yellow, and blue. So we got yellow at the top, and I made a solid triangle to kind of connect those. Those are three colors you cannot make, really. So we definitely have all of those up here. But all of our other colors on our color wheel, including like light and darks of all of these, we can make with just these three colors. So we also have our secondary colors, where we take two of our primaries and mix them, we get a secondary color. So if we mix yellow and blue, we get green. Yellow and red, we get orange. And then red and blue, we get violet. And then when we start mixing like a secondary and a primary, we get a tertiary color. So that's where we get like indigo and like a red orange and like a red, uh, a yellow orange. So I also kind of put some gradients over here so you can kind of see what happens when you mix your colors and kind of blend them here on the canvas. My suggestion to you when you're picking your colors today is to pick two primaries and kind of do like all of these colors because when you pick these two, it will blend all of these on your canvas. Or you could pick a secondary like orange and a primary like yellow and just kind of get this gradient here. I don't suggest picking complements. And complements are colors that are straight across from each other on the color wheel. So if I drew a straight line down from yellow, I get violet. And when you mix yellow and violet, you kind of get a muddy shade. It's not very pretty. So I suggest not picking complements. So like blue and orange are complements and red and green are complements. I don't suggest picking those. Um, but when you mix primaries to primaries and primaries to secondaries, you get some really pretty gradients that are nice and bright and saturated. So think about that when you're mixing your colors. We also have white, so you could do like a light blue to a dark blue. Um, so those are some of the things you can do. And because I don't have an example of that up here, that's the one I'm going to do for my demo is a dark to a light. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of go through the first step and then we'll get started. And then I'll talk about the second step while it's drying for everyone because your paints will need to dry before we move on to the second step. But you all have a canvas. This is an 11 by 14, I think. But you all should have a canvas. You should have an apron on your plates for your little palettes. And I do suggest putting it on. These paints are permanent. They are, um, they are washable, but you need to be quick if you do get it on your clothes. So we got aprons for everyone. Um, and then you also have a plate for your palette. You have a foam brush for your background, a spoon if you need to mix any colors. Um, and then a small brush for the later steps. So what you're going to be doing first is coming up to the front um, after I get through this part. And you're going to be picking your two colors for your gradient. And I'm going to be using white and red for mine. <laughs> but like I said, you could pick two different primaries. You could pick a primary and a secondary. It's up to you to do exactly what you would like on your canvas. 
And so I've just put a little bit here on my little palette. So I have white and red. And does anyone know what this is going to make? Pink. Pink. So I always start with my lightest colors when I'm doing a gradient like this. And I'm going to put white on my brush first because it's my lighter color. But if you are doing like other colors, yellow is a lighter color, so you'd want to start with yellow um, or like a green over a violet or something. So I'm going to start across where I want the bottom to be because I want white to be on the bottom of this. And I'm just going to go all the way across. And I know it's white, so it's impossible to see right now. But trust me, there's white on there. And I'm just going to keep moving it from the side all the way down, all the way up. I'm not stopping. I'm going all the way down and up and just kind of going to about like two thirds across the canvas. And I have it really thick here and I'm just letting it kind of run out and feather it here. And then I can pick up some red and I didn't wash the foam brush for this. And I'm just going to start on the opposite side. And because I do have white on my brush, so it's going to get a little pink, but then I can work that this way. And as I work it this way, it's going to mix in with the white that's already there and get lighter and lighter. And then I can go back up and go back and forth. But you'll notice I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping halfway through and picking it up and setting it back down in the middle. I'm going all the way across and all the way back. And if I want it to be a bit darker, a bit more red, I can just grab some more red, start back at the top, go back and forth a few times, and then just kind of work it down blending it into what's here already. So now I have this nice gradient all the way across. I can pick up a little bit more red and paint the top of the canvas. Um, I like to paint the sides of my canvas as I go along because I feel like it's a bit more complete that way if I just want to hang it on the wall as it is. And I can just kind of wrap it around the side and then just fix this up. And I can do the same on these sides here. Just start at the top with some of this red and blend it down, pick up some white. And if I wanted, I could even take some more white on the front and blend it back up into this pink color. So I can just kind of work it back and forth until I'm happy with it. And because it is paint, um, you need to kind of let it be its thing. You're blending wet on wet paint, so it's going to kind of have some funky things going on, like some of this over here, where it's a little bit brighter in some areas. There we go. So I have a nice gradient. Um, and you can keep going back and forth with this, adding more and more paint as you go on if you're not happy with parts of it. But that's just kind of getting the gradient there. Any questions on the gradient? No? Good. All right. So um, be careful with your hands if you get paint on them. Um, we do have some napkins up here. And definitely try not to get it on your clothes. And what we're going to do is we're going to have everyone bring their plates up front. Think about what colors you'd like to do, and then we'll um, get some paint on your plates. And I'll be around to help you if you're wondering, like, which colors should I start with or what I want to do with it. You're welcome to work this direction. You're welcome to work with the canvas up and do it in portrait instead of landscape. It's up to you with what you'd like to do. If you want, like, feedback on the color, you're welcome to ask for a report thing up here. Okay? So grab your plate and come up front. so they work really good. And I also find that if your paint's dry, you can erase this with just like damp water so you don't have any extra lines later. So I like using the chalk pastel when I paint to draw on top of things because that allows me to erase it really easy and really cleanly on top of paint. So when this is dry and you want it to be 100% dry, 
before you start doing this part. And we do have some hair dryers over there. Um, so if you're like waiting around and people are starting to finish up and you're worried about it, you can use a hair dryer. Um, make sure it's on a low temperature and make sure you're not too close. If you get too close, you'll start to burn your paint and it'll like flake off the canvas. So keep it far away, keep it moving, and don't put it on like super hot temperatures. Um, so when it's dry, what you're going to do is you can come pick a character up here if you'd like. You can draw your own. You can freehand your own. It's up to you what you'd like to do. Um, I'm going to use canvas online. And I'm going to use the gray one so I can see it better. And what you can do is you're going to figure out where you want your character to go. Um, personally, I like to kind of put them over on the sides because I feel it's more interesting. If you put them in the middle, um, you can kind of work with it sometimes. Like compositionally, I tend to put them off to the side and it looks a little bit more interesting, a little bit more active, like something's happening. So I do suggest putting it off to the side. Um, and I'm just going to trace this on top of my paint. It's mostly dry. And just be super careful, these are on cardstock. Some of them are on mat board. But I'm just going to trace all the way around the edges of Sam's here until I have all of that down. And like I said, this is chalk, so it's really easy to like wipe down if you mess up or something. And then once you have it traced, um, there should be small brushes on your tables. You can just come up here and get a little bit of black paint and then just very carefully fill in your lines. Um, using a smaller brush for the small areas and a bigger brush for some of the big areas. Um, and if you're done with your foam brush, what I would suggest is kind of getting it in the water a little bit just so they don't dry up with paint. Um, and I'll probably come around and get some of those as you guys are working on this next step. But after you have your figure painted solid black, um, you want to think about a ground space for them to stand on or float above or whatever. Um, you're welcome to add trees or anything else, like if I had a tree back here behind Sonic, that might be cool. Um, but like for Sonic, I just did kind of like a flat line. I just kind of did it a little bit hilly so it wasn't just a straight, flat, boring line. Um, for the Yoshi one, I just took my brush and as I was painting, I just kind of did that first straight line and then I just brought little bits of grass up as I was doing that, just to kind of make it look more like grass so it was a little bit different. Um, so you can do whatever you want with that part. Like I said, you could add something. Maybe I have an egg here for Yoshi to trying to swallow or something. But it's up to you with what you want to do for this part. There's a variety of tracers. So when you are done tracing your character, make sure you bring it back in case someone else wants it. Um, there is a few that have negative spaces. Like I have the ghost for Pac-Man. For his eyes, what you could do is you could still draw them in and then leave this part with the gradient behind it so you can still see them. So if you have one of those, you could do something like that for that. Like the, um, the creeper has his face cut up too, so you can still show that part. Are we good on that step? Yeah. Okay. With the black, do paint the bottoms of your canvas. If you're still like wrapping the picture, it's a good time to paint that part. Okay? So grab a tracer or a hair dryer or wherever you need to be for that step. You can also take some of them and turn them into like a burst star, like it was bigger. So if you wanted some of them to be that way, you could do that too. People are finishing up. You still got time, that's fine. But I just wanted to point out, don't forget to put your name on it, like sign the corner. Because you're all artists, so you should sign your work. So these are some of our finished paintings and everyone did a really great job so I'm super proud of everyone and everyone's is really unique and creative. Woo! Good job. I love it. Okay, that's it. <laughs>